Welcome back to the shop, everybody. I present a question. Is your waste board as flat as these pancakes? In this video, I'm going to show you how we surface a waste board. A simple step-by-step -step process using CarbCo software. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome out here to the shop. Now that I got you thinking about pancakes, let's talk about something that has nothing to do with pancakes. Let's talk about flattening your waste board. Now the first thing you need to know about flattening your waste board is how big can your machine cut? What is the actual dimensions? Now you can go to your manufacturer's um, manual and get that information, but a better way, a more accurate way, is to ask the machine itself. And the way you do that is by taking your machine all the way to the home position. It doesn't matter what machine you have, what software you're using. Tell the machine to go to a certain spot, a certain designated home, all the way to its extents. Drop the machine down until it starts to sing. Have the machine running. Drop the machine down until it starts to sing on the surface of your waste board. Then drop it down another, oh, 30 seconds of an inch. And then manually use the machine to go along all of its extents. So it will actually show you the most accurate way or the most accurate size of your machine. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Let's get over on the machine. So a Shapoko has nine spots already in the carbide motion programming that this machine will wrap it to along the work area. So now I have it in the center position. I'll show you how this works. We'll go to the far right. Very simple, one click and the machine rapids to that position. Now we know that that is as far back and as far to the right as this machine is capable of cutting. If we go along the left all the way to the next detent or the next extent, I mean, you'll see that it stops all the way to the left. That makes sense. You can do this all the way around the board and you'll get this shoulder right here which tells you exactly how much area this machine can cut. So when you're starting out, two ways of doing it, you can do it like I said, you can touch the corner and start to make it sing, drop a 30 seconds of an inch, then use the, the rapid speed and move the spindle all the way around to give you that creation. Now another thing you can do is bring it back to the center of your waste board like this. You can simply zero with a piece of paper or even your touch block if you like. Paper underneath wiggling until it stops. Once it stops, zero out your machine. Then lift the machine back up. Count the number of clicks you went up so that you can move it across the board without it cutting the board or scratching the board. Move it to the far right. Drop the same number of clicks back down. And I'm going to take out roughly another 30 seconds of an inch along, these, along this path. There's a couple of other key points that I'm going to add to this waste board as we go along that I think would help people navigate the top of their board. So let me show you how this works. Now we're going to run this all the way around to give me the most accurate size of this table. Now I hope the camera's picking this up. So here we have the shoulder we just created by manually running the machine to its extents. I forced the machine manually wider in each direction to create this. Now we have the outside shoulder and what this allows is gives you the measurement for how wide and how long your machine is but it also allows for dust to fall into and get out of the way when you're setting things on it. Now, I'm going to bring the machine back over to the center here. I'm going to take the quarter inch mill and I'm going to poke a hole in the center of this just as a guide or a reference to tell me when I'm putting stock on here where the center 
cutting area is. So we'll do that now. Don't forget to raise your machine back up or it'll draw a line across when you come over here. Now rapid position to your center. And that hole doesn't have to be that big. It's just, a, it's just an indicator where center is in your machine. Turn the machine on. Now I know that that is dead center of my cutting area, right there. Now some of you might know, some of you may not. These are keyhole slots that I cut in, and it works with my clamping system. And that is a simple slide bar, slides back and forth in these key slots, and I have a fence that I mount here. Slide the bar down, put some wedges in, and it works perfectly. In order to do this system and make it work, we need a fence. That's where the half inch MDF comes in. We'll mount the fence here, screw it down, then we'll bring the machine forward and we'll put the edge of the bit right on the edge of the fence and run it across to true it up to ensure that the fence is parallel with the x-axis. Before we can put the fence on, we need to show you how to flatten and surface the wasteboard on the computer. So let's get on the computer and I'll show you the programming that's needed to do the actual run. Okay, the programming is pretty simple, but before we begin, remember this is the way that I do it. There's a hundred different ways to do this programming, but essentially it's nothing more than an area clearance. And once you know the dimensions of your cut area on your CNC, it's a simple box with a simple area clearance. Let's go to the programming and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll go to new model. I'm going to put an arbitrary size in here. This is not the actual size that I measured in the shop, but we're going to go 30 inches by 30 inches. And the important thing is where we put the origin now. If we choose to use the right hand corner as our origin or where we're going to send the machine to begin with, as I set out in the shop, we need to put the origin in that corner. You can also use the left side. I chose the right side. Click OK. All right, so we have a 30 by 30 work area now. Let's switch to the 2D bitmap layer. You don't need to, but it's a little easier to see sometimes. Click on the square. Hover in the corner till you get your crosshairs. Left click, drag to the right. Crosshairs once more, release, create the square, close out the square. And as I said, this is nothing more than an area clearance and you're gonna clear the entire surface of your machine. So go to tool paths, scroll down to area clearance. Now what you'll do is pick the biggest tool that you have. And in my case, the biggest mill I have is a quarter of an inch. So our start depth will be zero. Finish depth, we're only going to go down 0 0.001. You're taking off just a hair on the top of this. Even if you have to run it two or three times, that's the most successful or the best way in my opinion. There's no sense in taking off a 30 seconds of an inch off the top of your wasteboard if it only needs just a little bit taken off. So we'll add a tool here. As I said, a one quarter inch end mill. We'll select that end mill. Now this is where it gets to be a little different from probably what you're used to seeing. 
in that the feed rate can be jumped up considerably. So in my case, I run the mill at 150 inches per minute. Some folks like to run the machine back and forth in a raster movement. I think it's faster. Maybe it's not, but I think it's faster to use offset. I prefer to use that. We scroll down. Machine safe Z is okay. Material thickness, we need to set that up at 0.75. Click OK. Give it a name. We'll call it Waste. We calculate. Close out the tools. As you can see, it's going to mill the entire area. We'll go to Save the Tool Paths. We'll go down here and we'll rename this Waste Board. We'll save those. And out of habit, I'll click it twice. Yes, I want to overwrite it. Close this out. Minimize the screen. Connect your machine to it and run the program. As I said, zero the machine to the surface here. Run it to this corner and re-zero for X and Y. Push play on the machine and you're ready to rock and roll. And that is all there is to the programming. The beauty of doing this system this way is once you have the program, you will save it and use it over and over again to surface your waste board to remove these little pieces right here. Little bumps from screws that have been drilled into the waste board. All right, there you have it folks, a flat pancake of a waste board. You always want to have a flat surface when you're machining to improve your accuracy on your V-carve inlays, any machining that you do, you really should begin with a flat board. Now, I hope you got something out of the video, I hope you enjoyed the video as always. Please like and share, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one. I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe learned that I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs>